Hey, what's going on everybody? Gareth here, FCP Euro. Welcome back to another DIY video. Today we're going to be replacing the tie rods on this E92 328i behind us, but this process will be the same for any E90, E91, E92, E93 3 series rear wheel drive and any E82, E88 1 series. Why you'd want to replace the tie rods? Well, quite simply, there's many reasons. Uh, in this particular vehicle's case, it's because the right tie rod actually has a slight bend in it, so therefore the steering angle and the toe is way out. Uh, so we need to address that. There is only one way to fix that, which is to replace the tie rods. But if you ever looked at the tie rod before, you have uh, two pivot points here at the ball joint on the outer end, and then you have another joint here on the inner end. Uh, predominantly what's gonna happen is you will, uh, over time, you'll get a little bit of play in the inner joint or you might get some play in the outer joint. But either way, since this connects the steering rack to the steering knuckle, if there's any kind of slop or play within this link, steering is gonna feel pretty vague, it's gonna feel pretty loose, and also you're not gonna be able to have a set standard toe angle on those front tires. So again, you might have excessive tire wear, things like that. Uh, so anytime there is play in these tie rods, you wanna make sure you go ahead and, and replace them as soon as possible. Uh, generally speaking, uh, BMW only allows you to replace the outer tie rod end, so you can't buy inners and outers separately. But truthfully, if you do have play in either joint, just replace the entire assembly and be done with it. Uh, also, at the same time, it is worthwhile to replace this boot because this prevents uh, any kind of moisture and dirt from getting into this joint here and also helps keep stuff out from getting to the rack and seal. Uh, so these are usually overlooked and not replaced, but realistically, when you're replacing these tie rods, you do wanna go ahead and replace the boot at the same time. So we're gonna be doing this all today. And at the end of the video, we're also gonna show you how to set the toe angle once you install the new tie rod end so you can actually drive the car to the shop to get aligned without the steering being all over the place. So with that said, let's talk about some of the tools you need to do this and we'll go ahead and get right into it. In order to replace the tie rods on an E90, E91, E92, or E93 rear wheel drive 3 series, you don't really need that many tools. You need a 21 millimeter socket and a 21 millimeter wrench. That's for the nut at the knuckle, uh, T40 to counter hold the ball joint stud in case it starts to spin. Uh, but past that, a couple specialty things you might want, really good channel locks to remove uh, that inner uh, joint at the steering rack. Etiker clamp pliers for uh, squeezing the clamps at the steering rack uh, for the bellow to make sure that that is a tight seal. A T50 Torx uh, for adjusting the uh, tie rod. You have to undo the jam bolt at the end of that. Uh, but along with that, highly recommend using some kind of anti-seize on the threaded portion of the tie rod to make it easier to you know, adjust it in the future. They typically have a, a tendency to jam up and seize over time. So uh, something like this while you're putting them on while they're new could definitely save somebody a lot of heartache down the road. So definitely recommend doing that while everything is in pieces on the workbench. Uh, but with the uh, tool said, let's go ahead and get right into it. We'll show you how to do this. Our first step here to remove the tie rod, we're gonna come here to the knuckle end. It's a 21 millimeter nut with a T40 counter hold. Remove the nut first. That'll allow the tie rod end here uh, at the knuckle to drop down and out of the knuckle. And then we can then move to the inboard side. Uh, so I'll start from the outside first, because if you release this and then you had to undo that, um, might, might be a little more difficult than you expect. Uh, so we need to undo uh, this steering rack bellow clamp in order to get access to our uh, inner tie rod end at the steering rack. So come in here with these cutters. I'm basically just gonna cut the clamp because we're gonna be replacing it. So we don't need, so we don't need to save it. Now from the factory, these uh, clamps are always installed in the worst possible way. So when we go ahead and put the new ones on, we're not gonna install it in the same orientation, I'll tell you that. Now 
Next, we use the world's biggest channel locks to undo this little, that little clamp there. You do not need to use things this big, but I just have them next to me, so smaller pliers will do just fine. And then from here, we can slide the bellow off and down like so. And that gives us access um, to this little nut here, which is on the pinion um, for the steering rack. Now, if I recall correctly, I believe this is a 38 millimeter. However, when you remove them, I don't worry about this at all. I just use these really big channel locks and uh, it's not reverse thread or anything. It's, you know, righty tighty, lefty loosey. So I've had really good luck with these pliers on, on steering racks before. And from here, we can spin it off by hand. There we go. So before we install a new tie rod assembly, we're gonna do a little bit of uh, preventative maintenance. Uh, you can kind of see on this original one, um, it looked like the jaws of life had been used on it to uh, basically make adjustments in the past. And usually, you know, you take it to an alignment shop or shop an alignment rack, you know, they'll put on some crazy uh, lock jaws and stuff like that to move these things because, well, you know, they've been seized in place. So being that we've all been there, uh, you know, those of us who work on cars frequently, we've dealt with seized threaded connections that are adjustable. I'm gonna use some of this Lickamali LM uh, 508 anti-seize compound. And we're gonna go ahead and apply this onto the threads of our inner tie rod end here. This will hopefully prevent the threads from number one corroding and also seizing uh, in the future. So hopefully, uh, you know, the next person down the road that needs to make a adjustment to the suspension on this car uh, doesn't have to use the jaws of life in order to uh, rotate this inner tie rod end. So we're just doing a little bit of work now to save pain and frustration down the road for somebody else. I'm also gonna do the same thing for a locking screw. Uh, normally, um, a lot of tie rod ends have jam nuts. Uh, but BMW switched over to this um, locking nut. It basically clamps this down or this knock, uh, locking screw. So similar thing, we don't want to have a situation in which this gets stripped out. So a little bit of anti on that is also gonna help prevent that again in the future. The other thing we're gonna do, uh, now that we've lubricated uh, the threads in this and the threads on here, go ahead and slide our bellow on. You need to do this beforehand, you assemble because you'll be sad using the little bit of a uh, little bit of lube here. Um, it's brake clean, but actually does work as a good temporary lube. Courtesy Corey Calvin, our motorsport tech on that one. I like that trick. Yeah, just make sure that uh, when you put the boot on, you also put the clamp on. Thread or outer tie rod end on. Uh, also, um, the inner tie rod ends are usually the same. Uh, usually the outer tie rod ends are side specific and usually they're labeled. So in this case it says R, so that's right. So we know that we are going to be installing the correct tie rod end onto the correct side of the car. Throw that back on. And now here I'm gonna do kind of a quick dirty adjustment. Um, I'm gonna count the amount of threads that are exposed here. So we got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Call it 11 because it's kind of a half of a thread. And all I'm, I'm going to do is I'm going to set this so that there's about 11 threads exposed. That's not going to be perfect, but that can get us close enough initially so that when we do set the toe on this, uh, using the quick and dirty method we'll show you later, um, you're not dealing with some crazy toe angles and stuff. So it's going to count. All right, it's good enough. And I'm going to make sure that this adjustment doesn't move. Um, so this screw right here is a T50. I'm just going to go ahead and cinch it down. I'm not going to absolutely tighten it to torque yet, but just tight enough that this is not going to move on us. So we need to get the inner tie rod end thread started here on our steering rack. So like I said, 38 millimeter crow's foot is what, is what would be required to torque this properly. I'm using these big channel locks. Done this a lot before. Not saying this is the proper way of doing it, but all you're looking to do is just snug that up and you'll feel it bottom out. So next up, go ahead and get our outer tie rod end in to the knuckle. 
it'll just kind of push up into place. I just want to get the nut on there just to hold it in place. Next up, I'm going to slide this boot into position, get it on to our steering rack like so. And like I said before, we're going to be positioning this clamp in a way in which we can actually crimp it and get to the crimped end in the future without struggling. So I'm putting it right here facing down. And then I'm going to use these Etiker clamp pliers to squeeze this together. And then that will be locked into position. Just want to get this kind of as tight by hand as I can. It is adjustable. There we go. About as tight as I can get it by hand. And now we'll just go ahead and crimp it down. I don't know why, but this is always satisfying. There we go, locked in place. And I'm using also the massive channel locks for this little tiny clamp again, because why not? We're using a 21 millimeter and a T40 to tighten this nut down. Right now I'm spinning the ball joint stud, but once the little seat for our ball joint uh, comes up here to the uh, taper on the bottom of the knuckle, I will then only use the wrench to tighten the nut. And lastly, I want to tighten that nut to 175 newton meters. We got both of our tie rod assemblies installed in the car. Uh, but all we're doing here is making sure that our total front toe is within reason. So, um, you know, what I, what I have here is we have about 70 inches here in the rear. And we have, we'll call it 70 and an eighth in the front. So I'm just gonna do a couple of quick changes underneath, just trying to get as, as close as we can to a zero number. It doesn't have to be perfect. Like I said, this needs to go to an alignment shop, but the key here is, is to have the steering as straight as possible. All right, so because we were towed out a little bit, I'm only gonna move the inner tie rod. I'm gonna move it uh, clockwise direction, which would be shortening the length of the tie rod length. So I'm just gonna move it a little bit that will thread it in. And I'm gonna go ahead and take a look at our tape measures and uh, see where we're at. All right, so what I'm seeing is basically almost on 70 uh, inches for the measurement for both the front and the rear, so relatively square. Uh, but all we need to do at this point is tighten the jam, uh, jam bolts down on the outer tie rod end to make sure it's clamped and that's not going to adjust or move. I'll do that. We'll take it for a test drive, make sure that everything is tight, no noises, and that it drives relatively straight. And then uh, the owner of this car can go ahead and get it properly lined after. All right, we've done our adjustments. We're happy enough uh, doing it the basic way. I'm gonna go ahead and tighten down these bolts here. Uh, this jams the outer tie rod end onto the inner tie rod end. So it is important after you make these adjustments that you do that. And then uh, torque spec on these jam bolts it's 40 newton meters. It's T50. All right, so that's how you go about replacing your tie rods on an E90, E91, E92, E93, 3 Series rear wheel drive car, and also an E82, E88, 1 Series. It's the same front suspension, so the process is going to be the same. Pretty straightforward process, really not too complicated. Definitely something you can do home uh, over the weekend. Uh, it's all basic hand tools, so. But other than that, if you have any questions or comments, leave in the comment box below. Hit that like button if you like this video and hit subscribe. We have a lot more videos on the way. And as always, we'll see you for the next one. Thanks for watching.